there's usually something strange or interesting happening with planets. I've heard that yes. Saturn's up to um, some strange things at the moment. S yes, uh, Saturn's it's uh, looking a bit different in a telescope than it normally looks. I mean, people are used to, you know, with Saturn, uh, you, the whole aspect of it is the rings. You know, you look at it through, even through a small telescope, and you can see the ring system. But uh, this year, because of the alignment of the uh, of the rings to our line, of, to our angle of view, uh, it, it looks rather, yeah, it looks rather different. I've, I've described it as looking a bit like a uh, cocktail onion people this year that you, you know you see this little ball shape of the planet and then it's got like a bright line through it which is actually the ring which is almost edge on to our position so what, what would you need to see that to get that cocktail onion look well you, it's a, through a, a reasonably good quality telescope you know? okay so I mean most most of the telescopes you'll get commercial these days are quite capable of showing the rings of Saturn all right so if you just start bush and having a look up where would mm. you see Saturn you'd need to look to the north of an early evening uh, later in the evening it's setting in the northwest area so as early in the evening as possible as soon as it's dark in fact some people would probably even try before it's dark but now yeah. that could be a bit problematic too at this at the early part of June because I've noticed that the the moon is on on the wax at the moment yes although with Saturn the moon's not going to be such a problem uh, the planets are pretty resilient generally to the I see. moon's light but uh, you are right that the moon will, the moon will be dominant dominating the evening sky particularly for the first week uh, as it heads to up toward full and then the second week uh, it'll dominate the whole sky for a while around that full moon time which is can make viewing other things a bit difficult start of the second week uh, by the end of the second week into the third week then the moon's in the waning sort of phase going down into the morning hours uh, so the evening would be suitable for dark sky observing that by the third week and then by the fourth week it's uh, new and then coming back into the evening at the mm -hmm. uh, end of the month so mm -hmm. so that cycle you need to keep the moon factor in, in in perspective that's an important thing to consider if you've got a dark night and it's, it's plenty to see during the evening the Milky Way is, you know, when, when there's no moon around, the Milky Way at this time of year is fantastic. Uh, from an early evening uh, right through the night until the morning, you know, and the, the parts you'll see will change, but it's, it's a real, you know, there's, there's heaps and heaps of good areas of the Milky Way to see. I guess a lot of people, the first thing they do when they look up to the sky, in Australia in particular, <clears throat> yes. is they look for the Southern Cross. Absolutely. Sometimes they see the wrong one, I'm told. They can. There's actually three crosses in the southern sky. There you go, Dave. There's, there's a scoop for you. Three. There's actually three crosses. There's a southern cross, and then there's the false cross, which is what a lot of people seem to confuse with the southern cross, although it looks a bit different. Uh, and then there's also another one called the diamond cross. I see. So there's actually three crosses. So how do you know where the southern cross the is? The southern cross is... The, key, the first thing is size. It's small. The southern cross is the smallest of the constellations patterns in the sky, just over 60 square degrees. It's about the size of an adult's clenched fist held at arm's length. So you're looking for something quite small. Uh, another way to know if you've got the Southern Cross is to look for the two pointer stars, also known as Alpha and Beta Centauri. And they'll lie just to the left of the Southern Cross or to the east of an early evening. Mm. Uh, and by the later in the night, they'll be you know, the Southern Cross will sort of sweep onto its side as we head late in toward midnight, and and that you'll see the, the pointers will appear to follow the Southern Cross, so they'll be above it sort mm. of later in the evening. Another thing that people might want to look for in the Australian skies is the emu. Yes, whereas most different cultures they re refer to different their mythology that they have refers to different star patterns or constellations this emu figure from the aboriginal people is quite unique in that it's actually a figure made not of stars but of what's known as dark nebulae so this is a dark patches in this in the milky way you need dark skies to see this so you need to look ideally around new moon and this emu figure is, is enormous it covers a large part of sky and it starts up near the Southern Cross in an area, it's a dark patch in the Milky Way near the Southern Cross called the Colsack. Most people just know it as the Colsack. Uh, that's just to the uh, left of the cross, in between the cross and the pointers. And that's that Colsack is actually just part of the emu figure, it's the emu's head. And its body then continues sort of further down 
toward the eastern sky. Uh, it ends up sort of going right through the main uh, brightest area of the Milky Way, which is known as the uh, galactic hub, or the, where the nucleus or the centre of our galaxy is, and that's heading down toward Sagittarius, Scorpio, that sort of area, which is uh, rising in the in the eastern sky. Well, we might talk more about that at another date, but what about early risers? Say you're getting up yes. very early for some reason, what would you see? What would you look for? Yeah, there's more planets down in the morning part of the sky, Dave, at the moment than in the evening. So for those folks who like, who like getting up before dawn, they'll be able to see Venus very clearly. Uh, it's often referred to as the morning star when it's in the morning, which it is now. Uh, and it's a brilliant white star, unmistakable. It rises probably about 4 a.m. and very prominent before dawn. Uh, and just below Venus they'll see another star which is quite a bit fainter but uh, orangey red colour and some of you might guess that's actually the planet Mars which is also in that area. And a lot further away. Yes it would be. But they're both a fair way away, they're both sort of toward the other side of the Sun at the moment mm -hmm. but Mars yes is quite a bit further away. Venus probably you're talking 150 million kilometres or more, maybe up to 200 million uh, Mars is probably over 300 million kilometres. What about Jupiter? Jupiter's up there at the moment? Jupiter would be above those two. It's rising sort of late evening, uh, so by the early morning it's yeah, very well placed. Uh, and just before dawn too, Dave, they might be able to see the planet Mercury over June, uh, quite low in the northeast just before dawn, bright yellow star. So there's four, potentially four planets you could see just before dawn.